So how does your browser know how to interpret the elements and attributes of an XML file? And it's not just your browser, it's any application that interprets an XML file. So, so how does any piece of software know what it's looking at when it looks at a, an XML file? And the answer is the elements and attributes in an XML document are declared in a document type definition. So let's actually look at a document type definition. But first, before we do that, let's go back to our recipe for oatmeal that we were looking at earlier. So this is that same recipe, and I will show you the source code for that recipe right here. And notice that it looks almost exactly the same, except for this header piece right up here. Now, the first thing to notice is that there is a declaration that this is an XML document. And the second piece is the version of XML, version 1.0, is the version of XML being used here. There is, in fact, a version 1.1, but the differences between the two, version 1.0 and 1.1, are not relevant here, so we'll ignore that for now. And the third piece is the encoding scheme. Now, there are several encoding schemes that could be used here. Again, we're just going to ignore that for now. This could be ASCII, it could be any number of those other encoding schemes. So the next piece is the doc type declaration. And what this says is that the first, the top level of the XML document is the element recipe, which is exactly what we saw before, right? The top level element is recipe, but that's declared here in the declaration. We also have a declaration that says this is a public DTD. Then we have the piece of this declaration that's called the public identifier, which is this bit right here. The first piece of that is the, who it names the owner of the DTD. In this case, the owner is Happy Monkey. Then there is a piece that declares that this is a DTD for a recipe book. And then the two letter code for a language, EN of course is English. Then we have this last bit is a URL and that is the URL for where the DTD actually lives on the internet. A more common DTD is probably the DTD for HTML. So let's actually look at an HTML page. Again, the page for the entire recipe collection on this site. So let's look at the source code for that web page. And I'll blow this back up. And what we have here is the doc type declaration. HTML is the top level element right there. This is a public DTD. The public identifier. W3C is the owner of this DTD. It is for HTML version 4.01. And again, it's in English. And then the last bit again is there is the URL for where that DTD lives. So that's the declaration header that you're more likely to see around the web. Um, as much as I like our, uh, our oatmeal recipe, this is not using a very common standard DTD. So, as an aside, it is possible to put a DTD in the XML file itself. For example, we could put the DTD up here somewhere, right? But, most DTDs for Dublin Core, for example, the DTD for any pre-existing metadata schema is going to be external, right? We're going to have to declare the URL for where that DTD lives because the DTD for a metadata schema 
that already exists, that DTD already exists somewhere on the web. So we're going to want to point to it rather than include it in our, XML, in our own XML document. So now let's actually look at this recipe book DTD.